Hi students, uh, so this is um, your next recorded lecture and this is on the Holocaust. Um, so when we talk about the Holocaust, the first thing we need to talk about is who was involved. Uh, who were rounded up by the Nazis and taken to uh, these uh, concentration camps or death camps. Um, and then we're going to talk about all of these groups. Um, so first, uh, on this list you see we have the Jews, the Slavs, the Gypsies, or Roma, Jehovah's Witnesses, Communists, Homosexuals, and the Physically or Mentally Disabled. And all of these people fall into three large groups. Uh, the first three, Jews, Slavs, and Gypsies, all fall into um, basically ethnic groups that the Germans thought were inferior. Um, there's a long-standing history with the Jews, and we'll go into a little bit more depth with them in a little bit, um, because obviously they were the main victims of the Holocaust, uh, and so we'll spend some serious time talking about why that is and um, what happened to the Jewish population in Europe. Um, but moving on to the Slavs and to um, the Gypsies or Roma, um, when you look at the word Slav, you can see very easily how close it is to the word slave. And historically, the Slavs had been enslaved by people in Western and Central Europe, such as the Germans. Um, and so the Germans considered them to be ethnically inferior to uh, these pure-blooded German Aryans. Uh, and then when we talk about gypsies, uh, or the Roma, as they prefer to be called, uh, and you can see from Roma, uh, the idea of roaming or traveling around, which of course is what they do, they don't have a permanent home, and that plays a large part into why they were on this list. People didn't trust gypsies because they were always outsiders no matter where they went, uh, because they didn't have a permanent settlement. Uh, and so there are a lot of stereotypes about gypsies, that they're fortune tellers and dabble in black magic, and that they steal things, including children. Uh, so the Roma have a bad rap, and uh, because of that they were targeted as undesirable by the Germans. Our next group are the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Communists, who fall into the category of people whose beliefs uh, clash directly with the Nazis. And with communists, uh, we've talked about how before Hitler thought that communism was this worthless political structure, that it wasn't worth continuing. Uh, and Jehovah's Witnesses just kind of have the misfortune of being a, a sect of Christianity that doesn't really fit in with um, a lot of the others. It's kind of its own thing. Uh, and they were just considered to be uh, kind of these religious outcasts. Uh, and because of that, they were also targeted. Uh, and then the last two, homosexuals and the physically or mentally disabled, were targeted because uh, homosexuality at this time, remember, was uh, considered to be a mental disorder or disease, uh, which is why they're lumped in with the physically and mentally disabled people. Uh, and these were basically fell prey to Hitler's plan to cleanse the German gene pool, as he saw it, and to eliminate physical or mental genetic flaws. And based on modern science, we know that this really wouldn't have worked, that sometimes these uh, recessive genes can hide in populations and in families for generations and generations. Uh, but that is why Hitler was trying to exterminate these groups. He was trying to, uh, in his mind, cleanse the German gene pool. Uh, and so here we have a chart that I'm not going to take too much time to explain, but it's basically a breakdown of the markings that the Nazis used to identify people when they were in concentration camps as to why they were there. And... Um, the thing that's kind of horrifying about the Nazis is that they use uh, the kind of efficiency and record keeping that comes out of the Industrial Revolution that did so much good uh, for basically the most evil thing that humanity can recall. 
And so they processed people, they gave them serial numbers, and then attached these symbols to um, make it just very easy to tell why someone was in these concentration or death camps. Uh, and you can see they have, uh, for political reasons, so that's typically like a communist, which may be why it's red, habitual criminals, immigrants, Jehovah's Witnesses, homosexuals, and vagrants all had different colors. And then there were different, um, different markings for why you were there. Uh, if you were a repeat offender, so for example, if you were a chronic thief, uh, you would have the green triangle with a little bar over it. Inmates were also used in uh, prison battalions, basically, where they would do manual labor for the army. And so that's what the, that black dot indicates. If you were Jewish, they put a yellow triangle behind whatever the rest of the symbol was to make a Star of David out of the symbol. Uh, and then there were all kinds of special markings, escapee subjects. Um, if you were Polish or Czechoslovakian, they uh, called that to special attention. If you're a member of the armed forces, uh, or if you were what they call a race defiler, uh, and that typically was somebody who was of Jewish descent uh, that had married and had children with someone of German descent. So you can see uh, the race defiler male would be a Jewish male that married and had children with a Jewish or uh, a German female, or vice versa for the race defiler female. Um, those markings were not typically used against German people who were in the same situation, uh, but that's also not always true. Uh, so why the Jewish people? And uh, basically there's a, bit, a long historic reason for this, and anti-Semitism is the core of that, which means prejudice against Jewish people. Uh, remember that being Jewish is both a ethnicity and a religion. Uh, and there are historic roots to this, which we've talked about before, which basically boil down to um, early Christians weren't allowed to loan money and get interest back on it. So Jewish people made up most of the old money bankers in Europe, which had caused a lot of prejudice over time against them. Um, and that's where a lot of the stereotypes about Jews come from. Uh, which were typically propagated by Christians. Um, and basically it's a very sad intersection of religious prejudice meets um, money problems, and it's basically just a recipe for disaster and hatred between the two groups regardless of what happened. Um, but unfortunately it manifested itself in the Holocaust. Um, so, the Holocaust proceeded through several phases, and initially the Jews were basically just asked or told to leave an area, um, but that didn't last very long, and it very swiftly moved towards forced relocations uh, to the urban ghettos, especially in Poland, where they would basically round up Jewish people and ship them there. Oh, sorry. And uh, with these forced relocations, um, and into these ghettos, the Jews were basically forced to stay in these urban slums. Um, and these were surrounded by guard towers and barbed wire, and they were not nice places. You couldn't leave them. Um, but this proved to be too inefficient for Germany, and so they began uh, mass shootings within the ghettos. Uh, and when that proved too slow, they decided to begin shipping people to work camps, which ultimately became death camps. Uh, and these are the concentration camps that we know of from history. Okay. Uh, so here are just a couple pictures of Auschwitz, which is the most notorious of the death camps. Um, the phrase above the gate here uh, means work makes you free. Uh, so people were kind of led into these things believing that they could come out of them alive. But uh, oftentimes that was not the case. Um, this is a picture of clothing just spilling out of a storage building. And this is, these are basically the clothes of people that died in the death camp uh, that theoretically were supposed to go back to German people. Um, the idea was that you took the wealth from Jewish people and then redistributed it to the, in Hitler's view, more deserving Germans. Uh, and this is another storage room just filled with shoes.
Um, and to me, these are very haunting uh, pictures, but there's a good story, and they say that a picture, every picture says a thousand words, uh, and I think this is very, I mean, there's a lot of stories behind these shoes, and if you think about all the people that it would have taken to fill these shoes, I think it gives some perspective to what was really going on in this camp. Uh, and then lastly here, these are ovens uh, that were used uh, to dispose of people, um, and you can see there are locks on the oven doors, um, which kind of implies that some of the people may not have been dead when they were put in here, um, and that's kind of the gruesome truth to the Holocaust, it is um, just really the most horrific event, uh, the most organized execution of people in human history, and um, ultimately uh, more than 5.7 million Jews would die during the Holocaust from gassing, from electrocution, from injections of carbonic acid into their blood, uh, flamethrowers, grenades, and machine guns were all used to execute Jews uh, and other people. Uh, and it really is just uh, the most horrific event in history and something that uh, we struggle with today still to cope with.